Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overtracker magazine and today I'm bringing you the ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero of course using the Intel Core i7-14700K naturally. So without waffling too much, the first thing I have to say about this motherboard is that it's probably going to be very expensive. I didn't have the retail price at the time that I recorded this. However, I would not be surprised if the motherboard is around 17, maybe 18 grand. I'm not sure about that. but that is a lot of money however you do get a lot of motherboard with it in fact you get so much motherboard with the dark hero that i actually wonder what is the point of having an extreme board now this is not to throw shade on the extreme board it is a good motherboard in its own right but i mean if you look at just the features that the dark board has on it you'll struggle to find any everyday feature that you'd need to use that the extreme has that this one doesn't and in light of that i would say that as a swan song to the lga 1700 platform from rog at least this this is the one that i like the most oh of course than the apex encore but that's a topic for another day anyway without further delay let's get through just some of the basic features that you'll find on this motherboard let's go through some benchmarks and i'll let you know in general what i think about this motherboard let go when it comes to the dark hero board i for one believe there are few if any motherboards in existence that could objectively claim to offer anything of value that isn't on this motherboard with the launch of the 14th gen core cpus rog refreshed three motherboards in the hero formula and of course the apex encore i'll not say much about the other two but as far as the dark goes it literally ticks all the connectivity options any gamer would ever need today so with that said let's take a quick look at some of the features starting with the rear io from left to right we have the bios flash clear cmos hdmi output four usb five gigabit per second ports six usb 10 gigabit per second ports one of which is usb type c of course then we have two thunderbolt 40 gigabit per second ports and of course one intel powered 2.5 g lan port we have wi-fi 7 and bluetooth 5.4 q antenna connectors talking about the q antennas these are simple to attach compared to standard sma connectors which are indeed fiddly this is not a major addition but a worthwhile quality of life improvement i suppose on the board itself, we have two PCIe Gen 5 X16 slots, the secondary slot catering for a maximum of eight lanes, of course. We have a total of five M.2 sockets, four of which are Gen 4, and of course, the primary one is Gen 5 capable. So when it comes to audio, audio is courtesy of the ALC4080 codec that's supported by the ESS ES9218 SOC with audio grade capacitors. With that, you get headphone amplification and on the software front, you get DTS Unbound, all wrapped up in the usual Supreme FX software application. We have seven four pin fan headers scattered across the board, two USB 3.0 headers towards the front, a USB 20 gigabit per second header, which can, if you plug in the six pin PCIe connector, of course, provide up to 60 watts of power. We finally get to the onboard buttons. Here we have the usual start, flex key and retry button. And just above that, we have the postcode LED. As per usual for high-end ROG boards, we have a cooling plate on the back, which of course serves to help cool some components while aiding in structural rigidity and stiffness as well. So now we move on to RGB lighting. This has always been a major selling point for such boards and the dark hero here definitely doesn't disappoint. It's all contained in one area above the IO shroud that is the full complement of LEDs that light up the ROG name. Power on the board is provided by a 20 plus one plus two teamed power stage configuration with 10 phases feeding the CPU directly. Physical attributes aside, there are a few features that ROG has added within the BIOS. The most important one for me being Dimflex. As we all know, DDR5 is highly sensitive to temperature, at least more so than DDR4 ever was. As such, a temperature sensor and microcontroller have been added to the backside of the board, which can adjust DRAM timings, specifically the refresh timings, or especially the refresh timings rather, according to the temperature of the memory. As good as this feature is, for some reason or another, the default configuration for Dimflex is DDR5-8200, a DRAM speed that I highly doubt this motherboard can post, or at least I was not able to do that with the 0504 BIOS. Fortunately, you can configure your own DRAM frequency thresholds to something more feasible, perhaps DDR5-7600 or below. 
now that we've taken a look at some of the basic features on the motherboard i think it's best we just hop in straight into the benchmarks so testing was done with the core i7 14700k and kingston renegade fury ddr5 memory First up is Ida64 memory bandwidth, nothing unexpected here except for the fact that the dark performance is a little on the low side. In as much as I wanted to run a higher DRAM frequency for the overclocked results, I had some stability issues at higher DRAM speeds. This happened only after I updated to the latest BIOS which was 0544 and I couldn't go back to the previous BIOS so there was no way for me to test using the pre-release BIOS. 6 GHz for lightly threaded workloads and 5.5 GHz all core frequency for the 14700K. Now this is not necessarily higher than what you get out of the box, but trust me, the performance difference is rather substantial, at least when you compare it to what you get when you leave the motherboard at default. Next up is Geekbench 6. I'm retiring the older ones barring Geekbench 3 purely for its memory score test. That said, out of the box, the dark board performs better than my reference 14700K result. All the reference results, by the way, means that PL1 is set to 125 watts and PL2 is set to 253 watts as per Intel's product specification on their site, even though they recommend setting PL1 to PL2, effectively setting a TDP of 253 watts. Either way, an overclocked 14700K along with the memory can deal with the Core i9-13900K. Not bad for having 4 fewer cores I think. SuperPi 32M shows once again the default Dark Hero performance coming in slightly lower than the reference 14700K results. In 3 d Mark, the default Hero performance is respectable, the difference largely due to the higher power limit I would imagine. Once again, an overclocked 14700K is able to hold its own against the 13900K, leading in two out of the three subtests. In Handbrake, the default hero performance allows the 14700K to come out ahead of the 13900K, and of course when overclocked, manages to run away with it. Cinebench 2024 is next, and we can see that the higher power limits of the dark board pushes the 14700K performance above that of the 13900K. The older Cinebench R23 still prefers the thread advantage of the 13900K with the overclocked 14700K results not able to make up for the thread deficit via clock speed alone. V-Ray is next and things are back to normal with the overclocked 1400K on the dark board pulling ahead of the 13900K. At default settings, the Dark Hero has a significant advantage over my reference 14700K result. Finally, we get to power consumption where results scale as you'd expect. Because the dark board by default allows the CPU to draw more power or has higher power limits, the performance is improved but so is the power draw of course. Cinebench is here for reference only, but the more relevant result here is Forza Horizon 5. You can often overclock the system and by use of voltage offsets, lower the otherwise high power draw when the CPU is of course overclocked. Temperatures are also kept within reason when applying voltage offsets. When the system is overclocked and under a gaming scenario, despite the vastly improved performance, temperature increases by 6 or 7 degrees at most. And there you have it, the ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero. Nothing but the greatest experiences with this motherboard. Quite literally, outside of the DRAM thing, I had nothing to complain about. I mean, I've already spoken about dim flex and whatnot. However, just as an overall experience, this is a very solid motherboard. And again, there's something to be said about just how ROG puts together its premium motherboards. You really do feel like you're buying something that is worth the money. Yes, in terms of what it actually does for you, your computing needs and so forth, it may not be necessarily better than a Strix E. In fact, probably isn't. However, if you have the means and the deep pockets to buy this sort of motherboard, you definitely will not be disappointed. It's the attention to detail, the quality of life things, and all other things that come together to make this a premium experience. And for that alone, I know there are some people who are willing to pay top dollar for that. And if you're one of those people, then definitely consider this one. Anyway, with that said, let me know what you guys think of the ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero. Would you buy it? Would you shortlist it? Is it something that you find aspirational or what have you please let me know in the comments below until next time see you guys on the flip side so take care and peace